EMBL is a very special research organization. It was founded in 1974, following the CERN model in physics to build a European institution to lead the European research in molecular biology. EMBL is an intergovernmental organization that is run by 21 countries. 20 of these are European countries and we have one associated member, Australia. EMBL has five missions. Its core mission is basic research in the life sciences. In addition, its missions are technology transfer, advanced training for scientists, scientific services for its member states, and European integration of research. EMBL has five sites. The headquarters are here in Heidelberg, Germany. We have a site in Cambridge, UK on bioinformatics, a site in Rome, Italy on mouse biology, a site in Hamburg, Germany on structural biology and a site in Grenoble, France also on structural biology. Heidelberg has four research units. They are structure and computational biology, genome biology and developmental biology and finally cell biology and biophysics. The aim of cell biology and biophysics research at EMBL is to understand life at the cellular scale of organization. We immediately make use of the new technologies to answer biological questions. And actually it's the biological questions that drive which technologies we develop. So a recent breakthrough in the unit has been the combination of Marco Caxonens and John Briggs' group from the Structural Biology Unit combining live cell imaging and electron microscopy. And this was done by a joint postdoc, Wanda Kukulski, who for the first time could record an electron microscopy movie of endocytosis. There's many cell biological processes of which we know how um, they dynamically behave or what proteins are involved in, but we don't know um, how this relates to changes of the cellular ultrastructure at high resolution. What we were able to achieve is um, to really zoom into fluorescent protein signals and image the underlying ultrastructure with the high resolution of the electron microscope. Now we can combine this information on single events. The very exciting achievement is the new application of super-resolution microscopy combined with particle averaging from structural biology to study the structure of protein complexes in cells by light microscopy. And this work is done by Anna Chimboska, a PhD student in my group. I'm interested in how large cellular machines such as the nuclear pore complex are built. And in my project, I work with experts from the electron microscopy field and from light microscopy field to develop new methods to analyze super resolution microscopy data, which would allow me to figure out how different proteins are positioned in the nuclear pore complex to high precision. A key technology for imaging in general is chemistry, because we need better dyes to visualize molecules at highest resolution. And so here Carsten Schutz's group is key. He's an organic chemist and synthesizes dyes and develops reactions that work in living cells to couple them to protein molecules. We like to do chemistry not only for biologists, but to do the chemistry inside an intact cell or even an intact organism. And that opens totally new doors for the biologists, not only here, but all over the world. With this, we can develop novel probes, tag proteins in a different way, and make things visible that have previously not been observable at all. A recent breakthrough in light microscopy happened in Lars Hufnagel's group. He developed a new light sheet microscopy that allows him to reconstruct the entire embryonic development in 3D over time with subcellular resolution. Conventional microscopy techniques are usually insufficient to image rapidly three-dimensional specimen with high spatial and temporal resolution. In the lab we develop uh, light sheet microscopy based microscopes that can image, for example, whole drosophila embryos within a fraction of a second for a very extended long periods of time. A great example of how imaging can answer how cells work in an organism is provided by Darren Gilmour's group recently, where Erika Donja has looked at the migration of a group of cells to make a new sensory organ. We made use of a novel timer approach to visualize chemokine activity in vivo in the live zebrafish embryo. We discovered that the primordium is able by itself to create a local gradient that guides its migration towards the tail of the fish. François Nidlex group in the unit specializes in computer simulation and this allows us to extract knowledge from the complex dynamic behavior of molecules that we observe in living cells. 
Through computer modelling, we're capable of representing the different components that go into making the spindle in the computer. And then we can look at those different activities and how they work together in order to make the, the structure function well uh, in segregating chromosomes. Part of our mission is to develop new technologies and our research groups do this very successfully. But combined with that, our mission is to make these technologies available to researchers at EMBL, but also in our member states. And this we do through our core facilities. They take up the methods as soon as they are developed and support them as a service to everybody. The core facilities at EMBL, they support users in technologies in the fields of uh, genomics, proteomics, protein production, or chemical biology, flow cytometry, but also light and electron microscopy. Typically the core facilities work in a manner that the scientists uh, come up with a problem and the facility staff typically helps them in achieving uh, their goals and uh, try to develop sometimes even new methodology or applications based on the technology available. EMBA is based on a turnover system and all its scientific staff, including the faculty. They only stay a maximum of nine years, which is great because we always have the youngest and brightest people here doing very innovative research. But that also means we constantly look for new people to join EMBL, develop their own ideas here and receive training in a fantastically supportive environment.